Alrighty. Well, Byron or Bayushi is running his usual team, but as I'm, uh, we've seen has been branching out lately. Formerly a Slink One trick, uh, we saw him playing a pretty solid Ryu earlier. Uh, Marco that Romagna is a what is it? M Bison One trick, uh, or at least formerly known as. So we will see if that's changed as well. Mad is an all rounder. He likes uh, a lot of characters, but Minato, Carl, and Jeanette are among his favorites. We'll see what he's running today. He accidentally shuffled something, it looks like. Alright, Benazma has Linka, Joffrey, and Ryu. Um. Mad is searching his deck for his character card. What do we got? Oh, hey, it's Bison. It's not supposed to do that. Okay. Bison versus Renea. We have seen Renea absolutely slaughter this matchup before, so I'm kind of curious how this goes. Uh, Marco's running Sagat, Bison, Marathi. Wow. One of these things is not like the others. Um, yeah, two like range three to four specialists, especially range three. Uh, and then Marathi, who is a... Wow, okay. So Marathi is rushed down. Like, well, actually, wait. Is he rushed down or is he a grappler? I think technically he's a grappler. But, like, he is an extremely aggressive character. Probably the most aggressive character in the game. Uh, he just needs to be at range one all the time. So he spends all his time rushing at you at top speed. Um, and then Bison is... Uh, what is he? He's a payout zoner. He's not a keep away zoner. Sagat is a keepaway zoner, and Bison's a payout zoner, and then Marathi is grappler. So this will be interesting. So then uh, Joffrey is... It's kind of a half grappler. Like, he he's a big trading boy, but he has some long-range hits. Whoa, hey, folks. Okay. Um, Well, somebody just started the timer. Whatever. Eh, if it's a little behind, no big deal. Yeah, okay. Timer started, so... It's behind by like, or like, we're like one minute ahead. Um, all right, where was I? And then, uh, and then Ryu, who is of course uh, all rounder. He's a defensive zoner basically, but everyone exceeds his zoner, so no big deal. Okay, Renee boosts Bison preps. No, he doesn't. He change card. He does the Bison change cards action where he throws a card from hand into gauge. Um, he then parries, probably called shot. Renee reveals a hand that does not have a called shot. Sorry, not called shot. Straight fire. Straight fire is the traditional turn one parry against her. Uh, Sagat's in the wrong position. Why is Sagat in the wrong position? I guess they're just chatting. Um, working on them references. Something went wrong here. Blah. Yeah, the reference generator is stacked the cards somehow. I hate when that happens. I'm just gonna duck in real quick. Did y'all get it sorted out? I was Hello. just, I was just gonna okay. offer you a fresh Sagat. Yeah, let's well, actually flip my deck. I don't know what happened. Did y'all get? You know it? what's up with the extra? 
Did y'all get it? Cigarette. Did you get it sorted out? I I, I actually yeah. thought you needed one because it looked like yours got mucked up. Are you Are you good? Yeah, it did get mucked up, but it's like it's fine. Uh, thanks for doing that. I I was wondering, like we finished it, and then I saw another cigarette, so I got confused. Sorry, sorry, I just dragged it over there. Oh, that's okay. That, that <laughs> that's that's fine. I know uh, you're just trying to help. Thanks for doing that. Yep, yep. Holler to sure. me. Have fun, y'all. All right, we'll do. Thanks. Okay. All right. Uh. Glancing back, looks like Bison's continued building gauge. Probably, uh, actually, he's just got two in there, so not Bison dollars. All right, he used an aggressive parry to get rid of called shot. Then he's striking, which means, oh boy, this is a high pressure moment. He's striking, and Renee is going to be revealing three boosts and striking. She's probably going to be using something very, very safe. Uh, but he needs to set his attack first, and then decide if he wants to crit. At range four, he only really has one card, uh, or the ultra, if I remember right. Neither of which are very safe here because no Prince of Defenses uh, against uh, Stray Fire for the special. Or in the case of his Ultra, well, Guard of Four and it doesn't actually hit Stray Fire. Oh, she plays Flare. Huh. Okay. So he actually outspeeds her? What is that? Yeah. Uh, no. Yes. Yes, he outspeeds her. D wait, doesn't he? Pyo goes somewhere that isn't in play. Hey, uh, who initiated? He, he struck with, he initiated with Shadow of Intelligence. Wasn't he speed 5? No, one of I them have, was a plus one speed. Shot. Oh, you're the, you're the, pl you're the tactical trainer. Alright, sorry. Carry on. Yeah. Alright, I just can't count. We're good. Yeah, she was speed six. Everything's fine. All right. Uh, looks like we have a face-up tiger shot over here. Gonna shove for you back. He is not yet equipped to deal with that, but he does manage to not lose too much distance by playing Tatsu. He advances to, uh, and then of course, yeah, Sagat will get some free gauge off this. Draw an extra card. Tiger shot is a really good setup move. Uh, Ryu, Ryu's in, apparently, and draws. Range 2 is actually a great place to stand against Scott, in my opinion. Um, he has a lot of good tools at ranges 1 and 3, and of course 4 plus is his favorite range. Alright. Whoa, this is happening really fast. Um, okay. So, Renea continuing to dominate. Um, Bison's looking at his options. At range three, that is a sweet spot for Bison. If he can slam, oh, if it's her turn, then that's not as big a deal. She's parrying, okay. Yeah, so she parried Nightmare Booster, which is good, but not fantastic. Uh, head Stomp is actually the better play here. If he has it, that should be crit that should be Critical Head Stomp, because crit head stomp is Critical Head Stomp is generally just free damage at speeds that your opponent can't do much to contest. All right, over here we have the amazing Tiger Uppercut. Um, which completely face plants into focus because it can't push and it loses all armor, which means that Tiger Uppercut just gets backhanded by the slower focus. Good play, Ryu. Good play. Alright, it was in fact a uh, head stomp, of course. She played focus when look at things, which does not get stunned. Yeah, focus or sweep are the traditional responses there. Um, they lose to the ultra, but at 3 gauge, he couldn't actually afford to crit ultra. So, not much of a mix up, really. With Bison, the main mix-up that he's going to play is Critical Spike. Alright, looks like Ryu's striking at range 1, 1 gauge. Not much going on here, it's probably just... Man, what is that? I guess I would play 1-inch punch if I was Ryu in this situation. Um, Sagat wants to get away though, so maybe it's just grasp. Like, grasp to catch a cross. And then there's a lot of things that Sagat can do that just don't really... Yeah, do great against uh, incoming grasp. All right, it looks like uh, Bison scoops at thirty to fifteen. Uh, he is throwing the character away and playing someone a bit more fun. <laughs> All right. Well, Yakus is gonna have an even harder time, I think, against Renee's control effects. Whew, man, Byron's Renee is really coming into her own tonight. Fresh references. Man, why is that happening? 
Okay, uh, what was it? Oh, was it Tatsu? I guess it was Tatsu. That works. Sagat is exceeding so that he can back up and draw some cards. This makes perfect sense. Oh, you know what? I'm not playing. Let's turn that off. Did it, did it turn off? No. There. Okay. All right, uh, Ryu, Ryu Zen draws a card. He's keeping pace perfectly well with Sagat. Sagat succeeded, which is gonna be very good for him, but I'm not, I feel like he's actually not doing great. He just doesn't have the distance that he needs. Sagat is a keepway zoner. He has the tools to stay at long range and he can punish you when he's there with uh, enormous safety. Like there's just usually not much anyone can do once he's at range. Spite is a fantastic boost and it will serve him well. Uh, that allows him to play something like a cross here to get out safely. Maybe get some free damage in, in the meantime. Alright, over here, what are we looking at? Uh, sorry, I'm going to try to keep the camera here. Alright, so yeah, we have Dragon's Flight, Fight Me. He advances three. Uh, Renee decides to cross out safely. That makes sense. Renee boosts, probably a speed boost so that she can set up a very safe flare. Uh... Yakos plays his options. He preps to get more options. Renee is probably going to... Oh. Draw some cards herself. Alright, he gets into her face. The problem with being face up against Renea, she can very often just dismantle anything you do. That said, she doesn't tend to win very hard. Not until she's in exceed mode. Alright, so she transforms Investigation. That's a pity. This transformation, I think, is the backbone of her success tonight, and it's an incredibly good effect once she's using it properly. Um, Alright, he teched Flare, which... Eh. I mean, it means Flare's gone, but Flare is one of those wins a little cards. Alright, how are we doing back over here? It looks like Ryu continued to move in. We had a sweep trade with something? Uh, assault, I guess? Which means it should be Sagat's turn, right? Okay, yes. Sagat is shuffling hands. And discarding for the sweep. Yes, okay. It's an adequate discard. Yeah, low step kick is not, like, super good. I never mind discarding this, uh, because I don't like the art. So I'm just biased against the card. I like boosting it, though. Boosting it is fun. It doesn't matter if I have dagger uppercut. Alright, looks like Yakuza's got to look at her hands uh, on a failed reading. She played straight fire to back out of the way. Well, I mean, if it had worked, it would have been 7 damage, so... Go big or go home, sometimes. She landed straight fire, however, so she's two transformations deep. That is scary business. Alright. Uh, she has exactly one normal in hands. It is blocked, so she's almost certainly about to parry something. She's deciding what's her highest value parry target. Probably Dragon's Descent. Oh, no, it's fine. Okay. Well, it's a very powerful card that she can't do much to evade, so that makes sense. Uh, Sagat boosts power. Ryu builds gauge. He's now at 4 gauge, which is the critical threshold. Poor choice words. Which is the threshold for um, Metsu Hadoken? No, uh, Shuryuken. Sorry, the, the uppercut one. The punchy dragon punch thing. Um, Metsu Shuryuken. And he's at range 1, so Sagat should be afraid. Very afraid. Yes, Sagat is getting out of dodge. Uh, he's doing a face-up at a speed 7. Uh, he shouldn't be doing that. Oh, man. Is he is he hard calling that he doesn't have a Metsu? Nope, there it is. Yep. Sagat gets punched for 7. That is Metsu. Sure, you can. Ends the breaks. You needed a speed 8 attack on offense to beat that, which would still lose the EX, but at least it takes an EX to beat it. Alright, what did I miss over here? Not much. It looks like we have a face-up uh, Dragon's Fire, which is strangely not that bad against Renea? I guess she covers it with Flare, but we know one Flare is gone. She's already exceeded, and she has some good boosts in there. Oof. Okay. Alright, so he'll get some damage in. That's good. Lord knows I'm happy to see some damage get on Renea, because I don't I don't know what I don't know how to deal with her. 
All right, so he returns that to his hand by adding grasp to his gauge via his hit effects. Uh, this, by the way, was one of the earlier forms of Hado Loop. It is a kind of an expensive way to do it, but it's a very strong effect. So it's also not like as central to the identity of a character like Yaquis. Spamming fireballs is something he can do. It's not what he would like to do. Some characters in Season 1, of course, could do it. But uh, Ah, yes, he's using the push to take another action. Dragon Scorn, excellent boost. Sorry, you have, to, you have to pay a force to take the other action, but you pretty much always do it, because otherwise, why are you even playing this? Looking back over here, there is a brief... It's a boost war, but it's a boost war that Sagat is decisively winning. He has plus two speed. Uh, Ryu is out of Tatsu, so Ryu's extra defense only does so much. If Ryu had an extra Tatsu, then the total of eight defense on Tatsumaki and Pukyaku would make anything he could throw really safe against the plus two speed anything Sagat could throw. Um, but since Ryu doesn't have that, I'm trying to figure out what he can run... Um, I guess Focus and Donkey Kick together can beat anything. Like, one or the other will beat anything. So, God is striking face down critical? Why? That's a bluff. Like, striking face down is a God. That's got to be a bluff. Alright, so Renea hits, uh, looks like with Focus, steals a reading. But Iaquas has advantage and traded even. Which isn't too bad. At least that's what I think I just saw. Yeah, so he pushed her, spent a force, face up, assaults. Uh, looking back over here, Ryu played focus. And it is, in fact, the Tiger Knee, which is, yeah, get stuff by focus. Um, I mean, he gets advantage, but the crit is wasted. Alright, um, yeah. <laughs> so. Renea boosts Swift Destruction, and Siaquis instantly techs it, as one does. Alright, she replaces it with the normal lights. He counter lights. There's a boost war going over here. Renea is probably going to win it. Uh, we have an old saying, don't get involved in a boost war with Siaquis. It's kind of like getting involved in a land war in Asia. But, um, Renea might just be able to handle it. She is, however, out of techs and lights in her briefcase, which are her main means of upping the tempo on the boost war. She can parry here, and if she can reading from hand, she can actually do some damage. Although the reading targets are none too juicy. Um, block Grasp, and then of course he has Dragon Scorn, or Dragon's Tongue, which has Scorn printed on it. Alright, so she's probably swinging here. Hmm. Interesting. <sighs> Hard to tell if this is a high risk play or not. She's only one speed faster. So it would actually be pretty reasonable for her to just throw a grasp out. Alright, looking back over here. Uh, Sagat looks like he decisively lost the last few exchanges. He's at 6 life, down to 15. Of course, the Metsushoryu was also a big deal. He's doing a face up range 1 assault. So that loses to Hadouken Grasp. Or sorry, sorry, not Hadouken. Shoryuken or Grasp. Um. Or one inch punch, which is not quite lethal, but ow. Um, yeah, so that's a five to five trade, and Sagat gets pushed, which interestingly is very good for Sagat. Um, I feel like that was not the right play, Ryu. If Sagat can throw Tiger Cannon, uh, not that one, Cannon, that one. And then low tiger shot. He basically has this game in the bag. 10-1 to 1 is not that hard to come back from for Sagat if you can establish distance. That is how keep away zoners work, by the way. They will get safe damage. Alright, looking back at the midboard. Amazingly low damage exchanges going in this game. Alright, he has scorn again. Push and no second action. Interesting. She's prepping. He gets a very good draw there. She texts it. Haha, <laughs> he gets Roar! This is a great boost to immediately draw five cards, and it forces him not to draw or discard at the end of his turn. Uh, normally, using this to go over your hand limit is obviously ideal, but yeah. Oh, we have a Reach coming into play over on the Sagat board. Plus your one range and strike. Face down? Ah, oh, this disappoints me. Face down. 
suggests to me that it's probably a spike, because spike d loses to Metsu Hadoken. Uh, if it was face up, it could be something like a Tiger Destruction, or a, well, it could still be a low Tiger Shot, I guess. But I think, but actually, neither of those need reach, so I don't know. This feels like a spike, which is kind of face up. Oh, what do we have? Critical EX Hadoken? We sure do. It is spike. That will stun. Five damage. Uh, in fairness, yeah, he had the EX, so there wasn't really much that, uh, that Spike would have done there. Like, was he at one life? If he was at one life, that was a mistake. Both copies of Hadouken were up, and he had the crits available. Um, if he had Tiger Destruction, sorry, Cannon, then I think playing it was the call. If he didn't have it, I would say dig for it. On the other hand, Ryo then would have just initiated with the critical EX, or with the crit single critical. Ah, well. Looks like we have Marathi coming in for Sagat. This is going to be much harder on Ryu, almost certainly. Uh, although, then again, Ryu is built to be defensive, so he should be okay against somebody capable of just mauling you in the face forever. Um, hopefully. Alright, damage exchanges remain low in the midboard. Um, that's not a boost. That's a boost. Alright, but Renea is all geared up and ready to unleash the pain. So, she's probably just going to keep that speed in play for the rest of the game now. It's painful to watch, it really is. Alright. Re reference, Marathi reference. Very good. Game two about to begin on the left. This. It looks like Kiakwis just conceded. What the? That's an Akuma card. Yeah, that's a concession. Okay. Well, that was fast. Yeah, you got mauled. 